So hello and welcome back to Bronte Week. Today, nearing the end, the second to last day of Bronte Week, I'm going to be talking about the brilliant, the beautiful, my second favourite Bronte novel, Charlotte Bronte's Villette. Chapter 1. Breton. My godmother lived in a handsome house in the clean and ancient town of Breton. Her husband's family had been residents there for generations and bore indeed the name of their birthplace, Breton of Breton. Whether by coincidence or because some remote ancestor had a personage of sufficient importance to leave his name to his neighbourhood, I know not. When I was a girl I went to Breton about twice a year and well I liked the visit. Oh this book, this book, where do I even, how do I even describe the glory of this gorgeous, incredible, beautiful, brilliant book? Valette is narrated by a young woman called Lucy Snow. It opens with Lucy Snow as a child going to stay with her godmother and Lucy's interactions with the son of her godmother and also another family friend who comes to stay with them. After that we kind of learn that some disaster has happened to Lucy Snow's family. We don't know what, it's never really explained quite as what has befallen her but she ends up impoverished, separated from her godmother with no family left, no one surviving, no surviving relation to help her. She ends up being a companion to an elderly woman and then after that she ends up travelling to Belgium to become a teacher because she doesn't really know what else to do with her life and she decides that this is a way to support herself. First off in this town she becomes a nursery maid and then she ends up becoming a teacher teaching English to these Belgian and French children and that becomes her life. While there she meets and falls in love with a man called Dr John who she is kind of in love with and reveres but he doesn't seem to feel the same way and he is in love with another woman. Basically the book is about Lucy Snow's struggles with unrequited love and also her like internal psychology and a lot of other stuff going on and also about her kind of making her way as a teacher and her independence. I love Villette so much. Like I love it more than Jane Eyre and when I first read it I was staggered because I didn't think there would be a book of Charlotte Bronte's so that I would love more than Jane Eyre but Villette for me is is like the pinnacle of, of Charlotte Bronte like it takes the themes that are beginning to be explored in The Professor and develops them so much and it takes a lot of the kind of proto-feminist issues at the heart of Jane Eyre and really expands them and does a lot more of them. If you're one of those people that loves Jane Eyre but finds the ending a tiny bit dissatisfying please please read Villette. It is so good. I love the character of Lucy Snow. I think she is fascinating. She is a bit like Jane Eyre in some respects in that she's kind of self-denying and troubled and lonely but also very kind of perseverant and strong. And her kind of internal psychology is just examined so brilliantly. There is this bit in the book when in the school holidays Lucy Snow has nothing to do, she doesn't have children to teach and she basically kind of cycles into depression. I mean yeah, what is being described here in a Victorian novel is depression and Charlotte Bronte describes it in the most brilliant like effective way like it's fascinating to read a Victorian description of what basically is depression and the way that Lucy Snow kind of deals with this and the way that Charlotte Bronte examines this issue is done so so brilliantly. The whole of Lucy Snow's psychology and the way her mind is examined is so good because she is lonely and she struggles but she carries on and the way that is explored is just just brilliant. I think Lucy Snow's personality is done very very well and is always very effective and I love her as a character. And there is a lot of stuff in the book about identity and the self, about the fact that Lucy Snow behaves differently around different characters and the way like her kind of sense of self alters depending on who she's with and the way people perceive her alters depending on who she's with. There's also a lot about what it means to be a woman who is working and to make her own way. There's also a lot of about religion of kind of pr Protestantism versus Catholicism in a very interesting way. There's a lot of kind of gothic supernatural undertones going through, a lot about morality, about love. It's just brilliant and it is one of the most tender descriptions of unrequited love that I think has ever existed in literature. But then also there is other stuff going on and it's just, oh it's so good. And I love Lucy Snow and I love Dr John and oh so many characters. Monsieur Paul is such a brilliant, dislikable but lovable character in a way that he is so odd and so eccentric but you also kind of really like him and I like that, I like that in characters and there are quite a lot of characters like that in Valette where they're not like likeable but they're, they're really sympathetic and really interesting and you come to like them slowly even if at first you were like what are they doing? I, I like that about Valette, I think it's really clever and so well done. I think the whole novel just works together so brilliantly and the, ex the examination of this society, this small town and how things operate the examination of the school and what it's like to be a stranger in a foreign place is just done so well. Like I said a lot of the themes that are brought up in The Professor of hard work and alienation and being in a new place that you haven't been before are really explored so well. A lot of stuff about gender as well, a lot of stuff about confidence and 
and self and just so much so much goodness in Valette so much wondrous brilliant brilliant stuff and it's also unpredictable and this may sound like an odd thing to say but with a lot of Victorian novels I can predict certain things or the love story feels kind of predictable from the start but Villette is absolutely not like that there are certain aspects of the plot that kind of creep up on you and you don't notice and there are certain things that you don't see the significance of until later it's very kind of unpredictable but feels realistic in a brilliant brilliant way which I love Lucy Snow is also a slightly unreliable narrator which is quite fun she occasionally keeps a few things back from the reader which kind of creates a kind of interesting dynamic between you and her when you are reading the book which I really enjoy so many things Things about Villette that I love. I cannot recommend it enough. It is an absolutely brilliant, brilliant novel. One thing I find harder about Villette is some of the dialogue is in French, which is a pain, so read it with a dictionary close by. Some of the dialogue is in French because it's set in Belgium and it is very frustrating when you're reading it. It comes out of the book being published in a society in Victorian times where most educated people who would be reading that kind of novel would also know a bit of French, but I, it can be quite frustrating. I think that's part of the reason why the has not achieved such great um, kind of esteem as Jane Eyre. It's partly to do with like the ending and the kind of plot structure of it as well and the fact that it's kind of feels like a less conventional love story than Jane Eyre. Not that Jane Eyre is conventional but if you know what I mean in terms of the plot structure but I also think the fact that some of the dialogues in French is probably really a bit of like barred or put off a few people. However, bear with it, get a dictionary and it is so rewarding because it is such a brilliant book. It is so good. That is all I have to say. I will see you tomorrow when I'll be talking about my favourite Bronte novel. I'm sure you have all guessed by now what it is.